you, thank you, not just for that applause, but thank you for coming. And above all, thank you for your consistent campaigning over the last couple of years. It's been a difficult time. The country has basically stood still while we've been through this ridiculous negotiations. But you have kept campaigning, kept the faith, and as a result, we're now in a much stronger position. But let's take stock a little bit of where we currently are. We, we were promised that the government would succeed in negotiating a reasonably painless, amicable divorce. But what we now have is a mess. And we all acknowledge it to be a mess, even the people who are not political, who are not campaigning. There is a recognition across the board that there is a now a very, very high risk of a no-deal Brexit, of crashing out of the European Union without any kind of settlement. Uh, we have Dr. Fox, who has a constituency near here, who said that this was the easiest negotiation in history. And he now acknowledges there's a 60% chance that we finish up in a few months' time crashing out of the European Union. And the consequences of that are being spelled out by non-political, non-excitable organization like the National Farmers Union, massive disruption of food supplies, you can see on a daily basis today what's happening in the foreign exchange market. Yeah. It is, is a complete mess and people are now looking to us and they're listening to our argument. I think one of the fundamental things that changed over the summer, <coughs> which is encouraging to our movement and is massively important, is the shift in public opinion. The last few days uh, we heard that something of the order of a 10% margin now exists between those of us who support a people's vote and those who are against it. <laughs> if we get no deal, it's two to one. Two to one. So don't let people tell you that the people's will consists of just sticking with Brexit. It manifestly does not. I think it's very important that we're having this event in Bristol. I came here two years ago with Amber Rudd to speak in support of Remain. And we went to a factory on the outskirts of this city. It's a very successful, thriving, optimistic, young city. And we went to a, a factory that makes components for uh, Airbus advanced manufacturing industries and the services associated with it. And it was made very, very clear to us that if we leave the European Union, this industry and the tens of thousands of jobs in this area that depend on it are at risk. Yeah. Because within that factory there are components flying backwards and forwards across the borders of the European Union. It's an integrated European operation. It has no future in a world in which barriers go up. And this city not just depends on advanced manufacturing, it depends on creative industries. And you'll have seen from uh, Theresa May's comments a few weeks ago on her compromise deal, there is no room for services. There is not going to be any protection of the principles that we've long agreed across parties should exist in the single market for services. They will find themselves faced with discrimination and job losses. So I think we must press ahead, this is a very propitious time to press ahead with the argument for the people's vote. And there are some powerful arguments for doing it, we're not just rerunning the argument of two years ago. The situation has changed, the facts have changed. If you remember we were all told the British government was going to save vast amounts of money. We now know that's not the case. There's the 40 billion divorce settlement, the economy is slowing down, there's less government revenue, there's less money for the NHS. We were told it was simple, it's actually proving unbelievably complicated. We weren't told about the problems of the Irish border. Another thing that's happened in the last two years of Trump. The whole premise of Britain in, in embarking on some buccaneering, free trading role in the world as a in the country independent of the European Union has been completely negated by Trump's protectionist agenda. 
made a complete and utter nonsense of it. So our position in arguing for the Brexit and for a people's vote is now, I think, stronger than ever. But we've got to work together, we've got to work across party frontiers. I happen to be leader of the party that is fully committed to fighting Brexit. But there are speakers here tonight, Sarah Wollaston, Stephen Doughty, from the Conservative and Labour Party, and they're brave. They're having to speak out against their own party leadership, pushing up with a lot of anger. <laughs> I just want to thank them and thank the people who are showing that kind of independence of mind. It's absolutely essential that we stick together, we fight together, we work as a team. And this is now happening. But this is a campaign that we can win. Yeah. The public can yeah. yeah. One final thought, just keep fighting, keep campaigning, we'll win at the end of this. Thank you.